we are back with some more Legend of Dragoon. Um, we are on disc four. We're in the Death Frontier. Um, just kind of navigating our way through this massive desert. Um, there are some oases along the way that we're going to try to take advantage of, hopefully. But it's... Um, yeah, this part of the game is kind of like navigating a giant maze. And there are definitely a lot of random encounters in this area, as you can see there. But I think our party is well equipped. Cool buggy. To a good start with the uh, additions. Oh, almost fell in. Oh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, the quicksand makes it kind of tough. But on the plus side, we'll be getting a lot of opportunities to uh, practice our additions here. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot Hashel has a, I think, a weapon that's... Uh, basically enables them to instantly kill a uh, an enemy with a given probability so that's that's been nice yep see wow it's super effective too what the hell it's been happening pretty uh, frequently. I'm kind of surprised by the. Uh... Oh, just barely made it out of there. Okay, and there's a wall here, so clearly there we got to go right somewhere. Yeah, over here. And we can't go up, so we gotta keep going right. Can we go up here? Can we go up here? Okay. And what about here? No, we gotta go left. And can we go up? Yes. Okay. Alright, we made it to another oasis here. We'll save it. I think this is the last one. If I'm not mistaken. Start by going right. Okay. Probably go back since we can't go up there. We'll go left. Can we go up here? Yes. Okay. 
We go up again. Okay, so we gotta go. We pretty much gotta go right here. Can we go up? Nice. Excellent. Okay. Hey, we made it. Okay. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, mention the fact that I I did a recording last night. It was like, or this morning, I should say. It was like two in the morning. Um, and I just got so tired <laughs> that uh, like, I was like, okay, I'm at like 20 minutes. I've made it to like the first oasis in this desert. I'm just gonna scrap this recording and go to bed because <laughs> I yeah I was just feeling the fatigue at that point so just wanted to mention that there's a little bit of a gap but it's only about a 20 minute gap so all right even if an adventurer is lucky enough to make it through the death frontier nobody can proceed from here time was stopped for me 11,000 years ago with the spell of this choker and this is the only way to see Ulara, the Spring Breath Town. But where is it? The only thing here is an endless desert. No, it's not. Hashel, I sense it. I sense people's feelings. Over there. We can fly over there with this. Are you afraid? I think you are. <laughs> Maybe. We are standing by you. I know. Let's go. What I really like, I wanted to mention, uh, oh, I should go back for that chest, but what I really like about this section of the game, um, in spite of the occasional bad writing is like all the characters have been traveling together for so long that it's like they've established so much trust trust between each other and there's uh like a certain amount of honesty that is coming from each character and uh it's like they've stopped trying to hide who they really are and and there's um it just makes the narrative feel better <laughs> at this point, but yeah, it's, I don't know, I, I just thought that was uh, worthy of mentioning, but okay. So, welcome to Lara, the Spring Breath Town. I'm the guard of the teleporting device, Karen. I'm a good friend of Rose's. Long time no see. Long time? Rose, you're starting to regain a sense of time, aren't you? No, not only that, you have recovered a lot of other things, too. Are you the person who stopped time for Rose? No, it was Charlie Frama. She is the person we have to meet now. Rose has been carrying the fate of the world all alone while shedding tears of blood. Can you go with Rose? Karen, stop it. I don't need to force them. I have already settled things with the black monster. The only thing left is that I have to complete this journey with my companions. If you understand that, I have nothing to say. And Dart seems to have like actually entered adulthood at this point As they say uh, acceptance is the first step on the path to wisdom <clears throat> I 
All right. Ooh, got like some Venus fly traps or something here. Miata, where is Charlie? You are wondering because she would normally be taking care of these babies, right? Charlie is preparing herself because, well, things we didn't tell you about, right? Zeke told you them, so it must be about the moon signet. Tell me what you know. The signet is the signet sphere. The signet sphere is a sealing device that was created to be the last barrier just in case the moon child reached the moon that never sets. Even my mistake was in your plan? You are really scary people. <laughs> Even more scary is Zeig. He is trying to destroy the signet sphere using the divine moon objects. Wait a minute. You made the signet sphere just because you were afraid of the birth of the god of destruction? And why did you make tools that can destroy the signet? Ask Charlie. It was decided between the siblings. I will. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Oh, Rosie, darling, I've been waiting for you. I don't need your greetings. <laughs> you know what I want to ask you. Oh, you are scary. But before that, can you introduce me to the son of dear Ziggy? This is Dart. Doesn't he look just like our Ziggy? <laughs> but Rosie, honey, it's complicated. You have to fight with the son of someone who used to be your significant other. And furthermore, the enemy is the significant other. <laughs> Do you want me to give you a knuckle sandwich? <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry, honey. <laughs> but I'm really concerned. So I'm intentionally making it happy and delightful so that you won't be depressed. <laughs> Rosie, sweetheart. Oh, this dialogue, man. Okay. You have never changed. Charlie, if you know, please tell us. Where should we head to? Really, you have the same eyes as Ziggy. I know. I've been waiting for you in order to tell you everything. Now, what would you like me to tell you? Okay. Here we go. About the Signet Sphere. Ziggy is trying to break the Signet of the Moon that never sets with the magic power of the, of the Divine Moon Objects. That Signet is the Signet Sphere. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you about this. I have to apologize. I missed the moon child, Shanna. But you still have time. The signet of the moon that never sets is not broken yet. Where are the remaining signets? In the past, they were placed in five cities, but there are only three left. That's why they needed the same number of divine moon objects. What happened to the other two? One was destroyed in the royal capital Cadessa during the dragon campaign, and the other was lost when the divine dragon assaulted the crystal palace. This, does this mean without the divine moon objects, the signet sphere can be destroyed? The divine moon objects are just tools that conceal vast amounts of magic power, that's all. So in order to destroy the signet sphere, Having the same amount of magic power as the Divine Moon Objects is sufficient. Okay. My dad knew about this and made Lloyd collect them. It doesn't seem like him, and it's so indirect. Plus, something is strange. I wonder how Ziggy knows about the Signet Sphere. Not only that, he knew that Shanna is the Moon Child. Okay. About the moon that never sets. 
It's the 108th fruit that the divine tree dropped. It was conceived with the god of destruction that ends the world. That's why we separated, separated it into its soul and flesh and sealed them away. My baby brother Malbu sealed the soul, which was the source of magic power in the crystal sphere. But um, when he fought with Zigi, it was broken. Then the soul escaped from the crystal sphere and started to transmigrate into a human body. Since then, it, is, it has been called the moon child. What is left in the sky is the moon that never sets. When the moon child goes back to the moon that never sets, the Virage embryo, the god of destruction, will be born. So we needed our Rosie to take care of, to take on an important task. Please understand her. Tell me about my father. You are concerned, aren't you? Why does he have to destroy the world? <laughs> Sorry, but that is one thing that I don't understand. But he was unmistakably Zeke. Zeke was the fiancé of Rosie. They crossed both swords and love. Just looking at them made me feel embarrassed. <laughs> Stop right there. I want to talk alone with Zeke about our memories. I agree. Yeah, why make items to break the signet? Why did you make the divine moon objects that can break the signet sphere? That's right, if you were not planning to allow the Virage embryo to be born, you wouldn't need them. I didn't want to, but my baby brother Malbu insisted. That is not an explanation, Charlie. Oh, you are so uptight, but okay, I'll explain it to you. I told you that we sealed the soul of the Virage Embryo in the Crystal Sphere, right? It is in order to draw lots of magical power and rule over other creatures. I wanted to make him stop being a dictator because even though we have different appearances or capabilities, we are the same. We should be able to live together on good terms. That's why I created the Signet Sphere in order to weaken the magic power of the Crystal Sphere. Rose without telling you that. The five signets that protect the moon that never sets restrain the magic power that flows from there. My operation was a big success, I thought. But Malbu found out about it and created the divine moon objects. I guess he was prepared so that he could destroy the signets anytime he wanted to. So this just goes back to a feud between siblings? Are you kidding me? Where are the rest of the Signet Spheres? That's right, that is the most important information for you, isn't it? Because Zigi has the Divine Moon Objects and he can break the Signets any time. Listen carefully, the rest of the three Signet Spheres are located in the ancient cities. The names of the cities are the Magical City Ag Aglis, Law City Zenabatos, and Death City Mayfil. Those cities are still alive. It's surprising, isn't it? Of course, they were badly damaged during the war. How do we get there? Go to Rouge, then your way will be open. You said Rouge? It's my hometown. See, it is already open, isn't it? Well, it'll be night soon. Why don't you, why don't you go look around until tomorrow morning? Ooh, yeah, I love the uh, ambient lighting here. It's nice. Oh, Dart, darling, are you going outside? Everybody left a little while ago. Baby, it's cold outside. All right. Now our way is opened. Shanna, I'll be there soon. Rose? You really forgive? 
Don't say anything, it's already in the past. Take your sword. You have become strong. You can take care of yourself. Kill me. Why? Black Monster is dead now. We only have a companion who is on the same road. Oh, how mature of you, Dart. I miss the time when you were chased by Fairybrand in the forest. Me too. And I didn't know anything back then. The world is so frail. The world is created so that it can perish at any time. The creator so it can recre recreate one any time. But the people living there can accept it, believing it is fate or struggle against it. I struggled in order to protect this world that was taken back by friends who gave up their lives. I told you, you are no longer alone, Rose. Dart? Let's go see everybody. This is just the beginning. Yeah, it's crazy to think about how, uh, how much Dart has matured as a character. Um, despite the shaky dialogue at times, it's like there's, there's some definite growth happening in all of the characters, but uh, I think it probably could have been expressed in uh, more diverse and like better ways, but... Um, Granted, this is like a, what, 20, 23 year old game <laughs> at this point, so. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. So, we are leaving in the morning? Yes, we are. What are you doing here? We don't know what will happen in ancient city of Wingleys. We need strong weapon. Kongo doesn't care about leader of creatures. Kongo goes with you to the end. For me too. It is no longer the mere problem of the moon gem. I cannot ignore the crisis of the world. You didn't imagine we wouldn't go with you, did you? I didn't. Hurry up if you want to buy humans and Giganto, your time is limited. <laughs> okay, let's see let's see what they got here. Ooh. 50% more SP. Ah, uh, we'll have to come back here when uh, we actually have everyone in our party. Oh yeah, just taking that item shop music. I don't know how I'm even remembering where all this, all the stardust is. Uh, I made these just for today. Uh, Okay. Uh, we don't even <laughs> really need any of these items. I might just get a charm potion just to waste it and... Does this contain magic too? Where is, where is the bar at? I think that's where I need to go next.
where the bar at. Didn't think it was, or maybe it was back uh, on one of those alternate paths. <sighs> Surely it was, yes. Was it here? Aha! Here we go. It's not true. The reason why I hate roses is because I see my mother in roses. My mother never looked at me directly. It was as if she was hiding something from me. And she beat me up. I didn't know what was going on and why she was doing it to me, but I remember at least one thing. There were always roses on the shelf behind my mother. Why did your mother leave you? Sorry, let's not talk about me anymore. It spoils our drinks. I don't think so. It is okay to be this way. Life is not always happy. Listening to your story reminds me of my past. About your runaway daughter, right? You are so sharp that it hurts. <laughs> oh, I hate being roundabout. <laughs> okay. Oh, you guys are here? When are we leaving? Hashel has been drinking too much since we, since he heard we were going to Rouge. That's right, drink a little more and let's leave for Rouge at once. <laughs> of course, to save the world. Give me a drink, too. May I join? I wanted to talk to you, Miranda. Same here. Nice, I'm liking this vibe. That's a good vibe that we got going here. Shall we go? All right. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know, our group feels really cohesive at this point and, uh, like, well-connected, honest. Um, even if it's, like, the little lines of dialogue and, and stuff like that, uh, it's... It just feels good at this point in the game, like, you know, if you've been traveling with all these companions for this length of time, like, you should, uh, I guess know them fairly well, you should be able to be open and honest, like, that's, and I think they kind of nailed that, um, Okay, um, so, we go and, like, rest now? What is, what's going on? Why don't you go out, sweetie dart? She, has <laughs> got the, uh, the grandma energy. Okay. Uh, we will attempt to go back up here. Yeah, there's been a lot of dialogue, though. I forgot that it was, uh, like this in this area. It's, uh, it's been good, though. Like, I like, uh, kind of hearing what the characters have to say, and, you know, you get some development in there, you get some, uh, some lore and all that kind of stuff. So that's that's always good in any RPG. Um, honestly, I don't know what more we can do in these areas. Yeah, we might just I think we just head back to the the main part of town, maybe and. Uh, 
something should happen. Standing in the darkness of the night, you feel almost like you've lost your sense of existence. Have you had this kind of experience? Okay, so yeah, maybe we just make our way back and see what happens. Oh, Maru's back here. Cool. Hey, buddies! <laughs> Karen was telling me about the teleporting device. It's not like back home. And when are we going? We already heard lots about it from Charlie, Are we? and we found out where we should go. You are coming too? Of course! Without me, the strongest of all. You cannot save the world. <laughs> Besides, I learned a lot following Dart. Everybody's the same, Gigantos, humans, and winglies. And I can't stand the destruction of a world where everybody lives. I think for the first time I agree with Maru. Aw, that's so precious. Alright, is this the first time? Leave here tomorrow morning. By that time, I'll be prepared so that I can send you on the way that go. Ugh, I can, so that I can send you on the way that goes from the home of Gigantos from here. Okay, that was seems strangely worded, but we can travel that far instantly. Then we might as well go directly to Rouge. Our power is becoming weaker day by day. That is our maximum power. I understand. Take a boat to Rouge. It should have been prepared in, t in the Twin Castle a short while ago. Was there a dock in that castle? I asked King Zior and had him make one especially. Wow. I'm surprised that he listened to a wingly. There are no humans or winglies when it comes to the end of the world. And it just makes, yeah, it just, if only that were the case in the real world, you know, you know what I mean? You don't need to thank us. Now, it is not too much to say that the mission of the city is to send you off. Yes, and this is one way this city has been looking after the world. Let's go back to Charlie. She must have prepared the bedrooms for us. Yeah, if only that were the case. Um, no, I mean, I want Hashel in there and I want, uh, I think I want Maru in there. Uh, for this next section. I might, yeah, I'll probably switch back to Miranda. Um, once we get to the other city, and then I'll switch it up again once we get to the third uh, city. Because there's... Uh, uh, what was it? Xenobatos, uh, Mayfill, and then the uh, other one, Aglis, or, uh, yeah, however, however you pronounce it, um, we'll just have to see what the strengths and uh, weaknesses are associated with those areas, but we're gonna go to our first one here, there's the big send-off, <laughs> Charlie, what is this, oh, naive boy, don't you understand? It is a send-off for our great heroes. You shouldn't have. Don't be so shy. Rosie, honey, you have been doing really great. <laughs> Since the soul of the Virage Embryo, the God of Destruction, was released, you have saved the world, let me see, at least 107 times. Really, after even being called a black monster. Stop it, the monster has died. Ziggy is serious, and he has everything to give birth to the God of Destruction. 
Only dragoons can stop him. I wonder what Creator So is thinking. Like destruction or regeneration? I wonder why it wants us to go through such a painful thingy. <laughs> what? We will change fate. Everybody must survive, okay? That's unrealistic, but alright. Now go. Zeke won't wait for us. Right. Okay. Why must we go through such a painful thingy? Alright, I think I'm gonna call it a session here. We're at about... Getting close to 40 minutes, but I feel like there's a lot of dialogue there, a lot of character development and stuff like that, so... Uh, I'm gonna call it. And yeah, thanks for tuning in again if you did. Um, I really appreciate those of you that, uh, you know, take the time to watch these videos. Uh, I'll be having some additional content coming soon once I'm done with this series. Uh... The Bloodborne vi uh, videos are going to keep coming, but I want to get more into the Souls-like games, so I'm probably going to transition over to, like, Elden Ring and, and some other stuff uh, immediately after I finish uh, this particular playthrough. But, um, yeah, I would appreciate some feedback if you got some games that, like you would want me to play or if you have any input uh send it my way i'm completely open to uh anything you might want to share or anything you might want to say or or any of your input so um otherwise take care keep being yourself and uh yeah just uh just do you and and all that We'll just do this last battle to close to close out the stream. Ooh. Oh, I stunned that guy. Okay. Oh, timing is off. Yeah, our timing. Oh, yeah, our timing is not not good right now. Still stunned. All right, come on, Dart. Oh my God, it's terrible. There we go. Woo! All right. That's a good positive note to end it on. Um, yeah, thanks again, y'all. Um, yeah, I, I really don't know what else to say <laughs> at this point. Uh, all right, everybody. Be well. Peace.